Right, hello. This is not a video that I was planning to make, but I've seen this mistake happen time and time again when it comes to individuals looking to buy their first yacht or ordering a new yacht to build or upgrading their yacht. Also, this is a very good video if you're a yacht crew or looking to join the yachting industry to give you a bit of background on what to expect should one day you be involved in a yacht build. Now, I'll just give you some context. Um, the, the yacht management company that I interviewed with after the interview said to, please, can we keep this discreet uh, for discretion? So I did agree to that. So because of that reason, you know, I am a man of my word. I will not be mentioning the name of the shipyard. I will not be mentioning the name of the management company or the length of the boat, but uh, it's important that these mistakes don't keep happening, all right? And it's a very, very expensive mistake. This yacht that I'm talking about would have cost the owner in the six, seven, eight digits. We're not, we're not talking about small amounts of money here. We're talking about serious amounts of money. Before we continue about what's happened, uh, let's just watch this short that I posted on this YouTube channel in March 2023, um, my advice to building a yacht. Let's take a quick look. Five things to never do when building a super yacht. Never go at it alone. Use a brokerage like Mortlock Yachts. We represent your interests and will help you find the right yard at no additional cost. Never accept anything on the contract or technical specification that states built to super yacht standards. There is no official definition and it's a matter of opinion. Never build a super yacht without first hiring a qualified surveyor or representative. Never pay a non-refundable deposit without first agreeing the technical specifications. Never finish a build without first hiring your senior yacht crew. To find out more, then contact our team at Mortlock Yacht. Okay, so with that said, um, effectively, if you're looking to build a new yacht, you would think in your mind, the best thing to do is go directly to the shipyard, okay? The shipyard's duties are to build the yacht in accordance to your specification. Now, what you need to realize is, unlike ordering a car, say a BMW, a Mercedes, or an Audi, yachts, when you're ordering them for a new build, especially larger yachts, are pretty much almost custom, semi-custom, okay? So it's very rare that on the bigger boats you see two, two yachts the same, okay? So in terms of trial and error with cars, and they, they build thousands of them, they can see where the mistakes are, they can rectify those mistakes, so the newer cars will have less problems. Unfortunately, with boats, it doesn't work like that, okay? So a part of what I do in order to keep my licenses relevant and active, I do a lot of what's called relief work. What does that mean? Is that if a captain on a yacht goes on vacation or a delivery needs to be made or um, they've had to fire a captain, they need to find somebody temporary, I will go for a few days or a few weeks on board that particular yacht and run it as a captain until they find a replacement or the captain comes back from their leave or whatever the situation is. So there was one position posted for a new build um, delivered last year for a captain. And so I applied for it. And uh, quite shortly afterwards, I got a phone call from the management company. And they explained the situation. Uh, what had happened was the boat got delivered to the owner last year. They had a few technical problems. The boat got returned to the shipyard for some repairs. And now they're planning their um, season this year, 2024, you know, maybe Mediterranean season. It's so, like, okay, and they need a captain to go and do the sea trials uh, with the yard, uh, with the owner's representative company, and with the um, technicians. All right, okay. Um, in all fairness, the management company that have taken over the boat have only been involved for a very short period of time. They were not involved in the technical aspect of the boat. They were not involved in the build of the boat and they were not involved in the contract of the boat. It's really important this, because they are a very well-known management company, um, which I respect a lot. And they unfortunately got handed a, um, a boat which um, wasn't built how it should be built. 
So then I start asking questions about the boat and they had a few captains before, which first of all, I found quite odd. I'm like, why do these captains keep leaving? So I try and investigate a bit further. Uh, the reasonings for me seemed a little bit vague. And so I started asking questions about the boat, about the build of the boat. So I asked which flag the boat was gonna be. I won't mention the flag, but they told me the flag. So the flag is where the boat will be registered, which country will be registered. And when they mentioned the name of where it'd be registered, I thought, okay, that's quite a flag, what we call a flag of convenience. And then I said, is it built to the large yacht code? Because this yacht is over 24 meters. Now the large yacht code is effectively um, a code that is followed by the yacht builder, by the technical team um, to meet the flag state's minimal requirements to operate as a commercial vessel, right? So I asked them, is it built to large yacht code? They said, no. That's, that was my first red flag, okay? My advice always to anybody looking to build a new yacht over 24 meters, or any yacht in that case, always build it to commercial standards. What that means is, is that when it's delivered, you can charter the yacht if you wish to. If you don't wish to, you can keep it private. A lot of people would say, well, I wanna keep my boat private. Why would I build it to a commercial standard? Well, the reason being is because A, it's built safer, okay? In other words, it's meeting minimal requirements set out by the flag state. Two, the resale value. Because if you have a boat that's been built for commercial operations and it comes a time that you want to sell your boat, it's gonna be a lot more appealing to potential buyers if the boat is able to do charter. So you can change the commercial, you can change a private registration to a commercial registration. Now, why certain boats are still being built without the large yacht code, I don't understand it. It makes zero sense to me. Okay, but anyway, each to their own. So then usually, what would happen if that's the case, it will be built then on top of that to the large yacht code, you'll have it built to what's called class, a classification society. Now class will set up, can be as an example of classification, just to name a few, there's Lloyd's, there's ABS, which is American Bureau of Shipping, there's Rena, there's a few more, I think there's 11 or 12. And what they do, they set the minimal standards in terms of construction, um, operation, maintenance, and, they, and the boat gets surveyed every year. By the way, with the large yacht code, uh, when the vessel is commercial, you also get surveyed every year every year from the flag state. So you have flag and you have class, those two things. So now I ask the question is, which classification society has the boat been built to? And the person interviewing me says, ah. I was like, what's that? There is no class. So what that effectively means is they built a boat that's not been overseen by flag or by any class society, an external representative ensuring that the boat has been built to a minimal, minimal set of standards. Bear in mind, we're talking about an eight figure yacht here. And at that moment, uh, it all kind of made sense to me as to why these captains were leaving because the boat's not being built to a certain standard. Now, the issue that now that this owner has is he's built a yacht with this shipyard. There's no class, there's no large yacht code. It's gonna be very difficult in my eyes, to resell this boat in the future. Because one, any good sales broker will not allow their clients to buy this boat with any form of class or, or large yacht code. Two, I was very surprised to hear that the boat got insured. If I was an underwriter, I'll be saying to the insurance company, do not insure this boat, but they have got insurance. I would imagine that the insurance company would have imposed extreme rules for the boat in terms of 
uh, limiting the mileage they can go from a safe hit haven, limiting the weather they can go out on. There'll be so many limitations, the operational area of the vessel for sure. Um, I'm very surprised they got insurance and I'm, I'm sure the premiums are gonna be very, very high. So the point of this is again, um, if you are looking to build a yacht, please seek external representation. Okay, this is not an ad for my business, Mortlock Yacht. You, there's there's very good other companies out there, but it, it breaks my heart to see that people who are building a yacht are misled down the wrong path, not given the right information. Certain individuals saying, yes, we can do this, we can do that, but not setting realistic expectations for the buyer, the owner, the person building the yacht. And at the end of the day, right, what you need to remember, these are minimal safety standards, minimal. And it's not being built to that. And I, when I had this interview, I was honestly shocked. I had no idea that vessels of this particular size were still being built without class and not to the large yacht code. It, it just doesn't make any sense sense um so please guys if you are a yacht owner or you're looking to build a yacht a larger the smaller yachts you i think under 24 meters you don't need class um but the bigger boats over 24 meters you always have class always 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 it just doesn't make sense not to anybody that advises you not to quite frankly is an idiot okay I'm coming from a point of view, not as, you know, my broker side, I'm coming from a point of view as a captain. My job as a captain, I have three responsibilities as a captain on any vessel. To ensure the safety of life, to ensure the safety of the vessel, and to ensure the safety of the environment, okay? Having class and having a large yacht code gives me peace of mind knowing that this vessel that I'm captain on has been built to a minimal standard, okay? Again, uh, I do feel very sorry for this owner. Uh, bad advice, you know, I understand why people go to directly to the shipyards, but always seek exterior um, advice. You can come to us, you can go to, you know, hire your own surveyor, you don't have to come to Mortlock Yachts. But please, please don't go direct. Um, it just doesn't make sense. And to be quite honest with you, I'm really disappointed in the shipyard. And you know who you are, right? You should never build a boat without class of this size. I know you know you shouldn't. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out why, and it doesn't make sense. Because if anything goes wrong with your boat, it's gonna be all over the news. At least you can say, well, hold on, we met all the minimal requirements, but you've not met any minimal requirements. And for the insurance company, yeah, kind of disappointing you guys as well, because you're sending people out to sea on a boat that's not being built to minimal standards. Um, obviously, as a captain, as a charter yacht captain, in my view, every boat should be built to commercial code regardless if it's being used for private or commercial use. Every boat should be built to class, full stop, full stop. It's our duty as seafarers to encourage a safety culture in our industry, not only yachting, shipping in general. And you get shipyards like this that give clients bad advice and it puts not only the clients' in lives in danger and their family lives in danger, but the crew, the captain as well. Because when things go wrong, right, fingers we pointed at the captain. Always. Well, why do you take the boat out if it didn't have any class? Why do you take the boat out if it didn't have this? Why do you take the boat out if it didn't have that? Well, the captain's fault that it wasn't built to class. And that's a problem. Because overall, at the end of the day, the captain has overriding authority over everybody on board any vessel. So the, if the hull snaps in half and captain loses half people's, you know, half people die, it's the captain's responsibility. So the captain needs to do their due diligence to ensure the safety of the vessel. And by not having class, 
they are not doing their due diligence. And during that interview, I said to the interviewer, I'm gonna stop you there. I will not be kept on this vessel. And I said to them, you guys, as a management company, need to tread very, very carefully because you have a responsibility for the safety of this vessel as a management company. Then I continued to speak to them and they said they actually had a, well, I won't say the name of the, the which, which class it was, but they did have a class of air go to the boat to see if they can um, implement a class after the build. They went, they declined it. The surveyor went on board and said, no, we're not certifying this vessel. Right, so there we have it guys. Do let me know what you think in the comments box below. If you're a captain, what are your opinions on this? If you're a owner or you're looking to build a yacht or you want some more information about this, you can contact my team and contact me if you want down below. And for brokers out there and shipbuilders, guys, you all have responsibility. And number one should be the safety at sea, okay? Um, thank you guys for watching, bye.